Good morning, and welcome to today's forum featuring candidates running for Elk Grove City Council for the November 4th general election. I am Trisha Erhammer, a member of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and moderator of today's forum. Today's forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cham Chamber, excuse me, Cable Television Commission. An audience here is viewing today's forum live in the Board of Supervisors Chambers. It is also being broadcast to viewers at home, and it is being taped for numerous broadcast, rebroadcast times on Metro Cable Channel 14 in our hope that hundreds of residents in the Sacramento area may view this at their leisure. You will find a full listing of rebroadcast times by either calling Metro Cable at 874-7685 or watching the bulletin board on Metro Cable 14 between 6 and 8 a.m. each morning. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization established to promote political responsibility through informed, active voter participation. The League does not support, oppose, or evaluate candidates or political parties. State and local leagues have been sponsoring debates and forums such as this at all levels of government since its founding back in 1920. The format of today's forum will be as follows. Each candidate will be offered a one minute opening. Next, candidates will respond to questions from our panel. The questions have been submitted by the panelists and reviewed by the League of Women Voters. Since we have a number of candidates participating in the Elk Grove City Council race, several speakers will be allowed a one minute answer for each question, although not all speakers will be answering each question. However, all candidates will have equal speaking time in the forum. Finally, each candidate may conclude with a one minute closing. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the candidates running for the Elk Grove City Camp Council race. To my far right, Robert Feltz, Michael Leary, Greg Higley is running but is not with us today, Jim Cooper, Catherine Maestas, KT Tran is running but not with us today. Sophia Sherman. Steve Detrick. And Lawana Montgomery. Candidates, welcome to today's forum and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Sitting on our panel of questionnaires are Jeff Forward from the Elk Grove Citizen. Loretta Kalb from the Sacramento Bee, and Jim Cobb Cox, the CS CSUS Professor of Government. Welcome and thank you for coming today. Now we are ready to begin our forum. The candidates have drawn cards to select their <coughs> order of introduction, and so we start on my far right with Robert Feltz. Hi, uh, my name is Robert Feltz. I'm one of four candidates for the District 5 seat on the Elk Grove City Council. Um, I guess I'm the political neophyte of the group. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm a total neophyte. I, uh, I've heard that comment, and I've heard the comment that I probably have not lived in the area long enough to know what's going on in Elk Grove. And I take exception to that because Although I lived in Wilton for almost 21 years and have only lived in Elk Grove for just a little less than three years, I followed the city from its very inception, you might say. Not back to 1850, of course, but I mean, uh, long enough to know that this town is no longer what it used to be. Uh, I watched this town, or when I moved into Wilton, it was a pretty much small town, and it was a town in which you could go into 
uh, this city, and uh, about the only place to eat there was the stagecoach restaurant at that time, and you could go in, leave your car unlocked, and and uh, just go have a nice meal. My kids uh, went to through the Elk Grove uh, Unified School District. All three children, two sons, and a, and a you stop. Thank you, and you may always complete your sentence. Next, we have Michael Leary. Thank you. Most of you know me out there. Um, I'm a 32, over 32 year, year resident within the city of Elk Grove. I'm a, a lieutenant with the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department. I've been there over 25 years. I'm a graduate of Elk Grove High School, only graduate within the uh, community uh, as far as high schools go, Elk Grove uh, Unified School District. <coughs> Excuse me. I was a member of the Franklin Laguna Area Planning Advisory Council the uh, Elk Grove Community Services District Board of Directors for 10 years and a council member for the last eight years. I have uh, three kids that are currently attending uh, schools within the Elk Grove Unified School District and the, um, uh, the uh, college district as well. I also have a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in business and I've been uh, very involved in the community in uh, numerous different uh, capacities. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Jim Cooper. Good morning. I'm Jim Cooper. I'm a 19-year resident of Elk Grove. Um, I'm only one of the original council members. So I've been on council since 2000. I'm taking my third term for re-election. Currently, I'm the city's representative on SACOG, the Sacramento Area Council of Governments, and also the city's representative on the Human Rights and Fair Housing Commission. I'm very active in my community. I coach youth sports. I was a president for the Elk Grove Girls Softball League. I'm a captain with the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department and have been so for 24 years now. Currently, I'm the commander of the Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force, which deals with child porn for the Central Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Catherine. Hello, everyone. My name is Catherine Maestas. I'm running for City Council <coughs> District 5. I'm a proud resident of Elk Grove. My family and I have been living there for over 15 years. We have three ch beautiful children. And my oldest son, Joseph, is a new student at Consumnes Oaks High School. So we're very proud to support our new school and our community. I'm running because I'm passionate about Elk Grove. This is the area where we've decided to make our home and to raise our children and retire in. And it's because of my spirit of, of community involvement, involvement that I am running. I served for two terms on the Franklin Laguna Area Community Planning Advisory Council. I also served on the Sacramento County Policy Planning Commission, where I served that for six years and chaired it for three. I am committed to being a real voice for the residents of this community. I am proud to be running. Please call me directly anytime on my cell, 916-837-7952, or you may visit my website at www.electcatherine.com. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. KT Tran has joined us, so please I'm offer so your opening statement. Thank you. First, I'm, said I'm sorry I'm late. I took the wrong turn. Um, my name is KG Tran. I'm running for Elk Grove City Council, District 5. Um, in 2006, I ran for SMUD, and uh, I'm a candidate that really focused a lot on energy. And um, what did that have to do with Elk Grove? Uh, well, you know, recently we have a lot of economic downturn, and we have a lot of issues with gas and uh, rising fuel costs. I'm running for Elk Grove because I believe that, you know, the federal government, the state government cannot solve our issues. And I think that the uh, all politics and, and um, uh, are be begins at the local level. So I want to run for Elk Grove City Council to uh, initiate a, a program where we can invest to create jobs to bring green tech to Elk Grove because Elk Grove has long been a bedroom community, and we like to. Uh, I'm running to make sure that I can bring an auto plant here uh, that create hydrogen fuel cell, and um, uh, you can find more about me at uh, ktplan4elkgrove.com. Thank you. Thank you. Sophia? Thank you very much. As you can tell, I don't have a good voice today, so I'm going to do my best. First of all, I want to thank the Sacramento League of uh, Women Voters and the Sacramento Metro Chamber, uh, excuse me, Cable Television for having this uh, forum this morning. I'm a 38-year resident of the city of Elk Grove. I married a man who was born and raised in Elk Grove, so our ties to Elk Grove are very, very strong. We raised our children in Elk Grove. They graduated from the Elk Grove uh, School District. During the time that 
<clears throat> they were in school. I participated, uh, I was uh, involved with their PTA, all their sports, but then it moved on to where I was appointed to the Algro Advisory Council, and then I was elected to the CSD board. Then uh, I'm a governor's appointee to the California Parks and Recreation Commission. I am very accessible. I advertise my phone number uh, wherever and however I need, like on my business cards. But just so that you know, if you call my office you're, you're, and I am not there, your phone call will be transferred right directly to my cell phone, which is 718-9631. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Steve? <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Steve Detrick, I'm running for Elk Grove City Council, District 3. I moved to Elk Grove in 1990 with my beautiful wife, Jan in the audience today and we've raised our three sons Brian Nick and Stephen here in town I'm very active with youth sports I've coached uh, water skiing baseball and soccer with local regional and national champions professionally I've been with PG&E for 34 years I'm an associate distri distribution engineer and on a daily basis I work with individuals, developers, and government agencies to bring power for, to their facilities. From the citizen side, uh, I started a coalition with another group of people called the Elk Grove Coalition Advocating Proper Planning. We rallied 4,000 people together in 2005, and since then we've been representing the citizens, and that's why I'm running for office, to bring back the voice of the citizens. Thank you, Steve. And Lawana. Good morning, Sacramento, and good morning, Elk Grove. First of all, I'd like to thank the Sacramento Women's League of Voters, the Chamber, for allowing us the opportunity to be here this morning. My name is Lawana Montgomery, and I'm running for Elk Grove City Council, District Number One. My motto is community, the community change for the community is past due. Many things we see have been going on in our city. Uh, the decline in businesses, education, um, many things that I feel I needed to run to make sure that we, the voice of the community, will make the difference to make sure that we can bring back Elk Grove to where it was. I'm a mother and a widow, and I'm so happy to have both my daughter's twins who are in the audience, Ashley and Alexis, who keeps me grounded. I'm a business owner a CEO, educator, and mother, I don't know, I got a little distracted with the beeping, but I'll tell you what, vote for change, vote for a candidate, and vote for me, Lawana Montgomery. Lawana, thank you, and sorry for that disruption. If anyone in the audience does have any electronic device, please make sure that it is at least on silent. It is now time to go to the question and answer portion of our forum. And this is an important time where vo voters can really hear the stand on the issues from the various candidates. I'd like to start with Loretta. If you would please direct your first question first to Robert Feltz. Good morning, Mr. Feltz. Hi. Um, as you know, you've lived in Elk Grove for a while. The um, Elk Grove Promenade has been something of a disaster in terms of timing and opening in Elk Grove. It's partially constructed. Uh, the site is um, vacant and doesn't have uh, an opportunity to be used for a couple of years, given the financial condition of the country and the region. So uh, if you are elected, what initiatives would you take to make sure that that area does not become blighted? And do you see any other options uh, for the um, uh, the Elk Grove Promenade, which is at the south end of Elk Grove. Well, obviously, uh, Elk Grove is very connected to this project. And in my opinion, we have to keep close tabs on the developers to make sure that they carry through with what our contract was on this thing. We can't afford to have a blighted area in town. Uh, in the future, going forward for economic stability, we're going to have to do this many times, and we may have to have many ad hoc committees addressing uh, issues that face Elk Grove. And that's my plan uh, primarily for short-term, what I call short-term economic stability. The, uh, the, the projects like uh, the Elk Grove Promenade are nothing more than a symptom of the times, the economic times that we live in, and the national, uh, the national economic times. We're just a microcosm of that economy. 
and I think, in my opinion, to think that we're going to to do anything uh, uh, fantastic in the way of businesses or, or bringing business to Elk Grove, uh, we're going to be very disappointed because the money's not there to do anything. We have to take that fact and we have to work with it. We Thank have you to coordinate with the people that are doing these projects, uh, that big project, and at least <laughs> ensure that we get something out of this thing for Elk Grove. Thank you, Robert. We don't to be a blighted area. Um, Michael Leary, would you please answer the same question? Um, I've been keeping track of what's been going on uh, with the promenade. It is a very, it is, has been at least started to be a gem for the, for the city of Elk Grove. We plan for this obviously um, in a, um, within next year to open and then they've delayed it another year uh, since that time. So we're looking at uh, probably October of 2010. In, um, in reviewing their stocks from last year, uh, general growth stocks went from seven, about $70 the same time last year to less than $10 last week. <clears throat> that obviously is of great concern to me. Um, I don't know where general growth is as far as their ability to continue with this project. My expectations would be that they would in fact have security out there. Uh, we, as a, as a council, we have requested and, and uh, we were assured that what they're gonna do is they're gonna basically um, make the promenade um, uh, weatherproof is what they're going to do at this point in time and continue to uh, to work on the project so we need to meet with them and find out what exactly their plans are for the future and if we can in fact assist them uh, i would be more than happy to do that thank you thank you jim i'm mike sorry. I'm michael i'm sorry and jim <laughs> cooper please also. yeah early on we met with the developers and ensured that since the project is going to be delayed that they had security out there and made sure it didn't become a blight in our city that's our big concern um, General Growth is one of the top mall builders in the nation, and they're very reputable. Um, like Mr. Phelps said earlier, the economy is tough. It's hurting everybody, and no one would have, could have seen um, how the, the downturn would affect the public. Um, it's one of those things we need to ride out. It's probably going to be about two years before the mall is built, maybe a little bit longer. But with the demographics in Elk Grove, we definitely need a mall there, and General Growth wants to be there. Um, it's just a matter of time. Um, unfortunately, we have no control over the economy. I think people support it and want the mall there. Um, the public participation has been extremely um, overwhelming. So it's something we're excited about, and I don't foresee becoming a blight. It's one of those things, we've got to ride it out for the next couple of years, but eventually that mall will be there, and it will be the centerpiece of Elk Grove. Thank you, Jim. And Catherine, would you please? Thank answer. you very much. This is definitely an issue that requires a two-pronged <laughs> approach. First of all, what we need to look at is how we can best support local business. Let's, let's remember that bus successful business attracts successful business. If we work within our own infrastructure and support our local business economy that is existing today, we can better support being successful in the future for the Elk Grove Promenade. And the second item is we need to make sure that in moving forward with the Promenade Project that we do not compromise on our community. We need to ensure that as we develop this project, we don't shortchange ourselves by turning this into another strip mall. We need to make sure that we remain committed to attracting high quality businesses to come into the mall and attract the best for Elk Grove because the future of this mall should be a shining star for Elk Grove. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. We'll move to the second question. Jeff, would you please first direct it to KT Tran. Uh, Elk Grove's E-Tran bus system has faced numerous problems, including bus breakdowns, maintenance problems, and customer service complaints over the years. If elected, what would you do to improve the E-Tran service and fix these issues? Well, um, hi, it's KG Tran, and I'd like to, to answer the question problem, uh, and then I'll jump right to You will it. have a chance to later in the forum. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, with, with the uh, bus, the E-Tran bus, as you recall, that uh, Elk Grove bought that from RT, and they knew that the bus is had issues and I mean, they, they, they can't really travel long range. If I were elected council, I would bring RT back into Elk Grove and let them specialize in, in, in the area of public transportation. Then I also, uh, as part of my plan at um, ktplanforelkgrove.com, I mean ktplanforelkgrove.com, um, I talk about um, creating a joint power act with other cities like Stockton, Tracy, Galt, and uh, Elk Grove to create a joint power act to create mass transit between here and uh, maybe to, to Tracy, maybe connecting to Pleasanton so we can connect with BART, so we can have massive tr uh, tr uh, you know, mass transit from Bay Area to here, and then uh, of course from Elk Grove connected to Sacramento, w which will be handled by RT. Thank you. Sophia Sherman, would you please 
answer the same question? Yes, thank you. Regarding E-TRAN, I have to admit that there have been many issues, but that's in the past, let's move forward. We are taking steps to correct those issues. First of all, we are um, out looking for a new transit manager. We have some uh, interviews ready to go. Uh, the buses that we purchased, yes, we had issues, but again, let's move forward. We have purchased new buses. The drivers are pleased. They're the ones that have to deal with those buses on a daily basis. The complaints that we have from our citizens, the ridership in Elk Grove was, has basically trickled a little bit down to where uh, a good portion of them, I would say maybe 98% of them are now satisfied with the, the, uh, the process. Excuse me. <clears throat> but, <coughs> but all in all, we are making uh, 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 sure that uh, the buses that we have out on the road uh, are uh, up to date, comfortable, and safe. That's the major thing, safe. As far as turning back to RT, I'm sorry that isn't gonna cut it with me. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Steve Detrick, would you also answer this question? Absolutely. Uh, one of the items is the, the vehicles, that, the buses that we have, many of them are uh, compressed national gas vehicles, but we currently don't have a natural gas filling facility in Elk Grove. Uh, so one of my goals would be to bring uh, work with PG&E in the city to bring compressed natural gas, which is also referred to CNG, to Elk Grove to have a station, not only for the E-Tran, but also possibly to convert uh, the refuge vehicles, trucks, to be able to become a greener city with that area, is also opening it up for the possibility of private vehicles and then we could have conversion facilities as well here in town in the auto mall, then we'll be able to also sell uh, compressed natural gas vehicles or dual fuel vehicles. Uh, it'd also be prudent to explore the opportunity of public uh, transit in every aspect there is, including uh, revisiting regional transit. And the other issue is getting jobs in Elk Grove and getting people where they don't have to use transit. Thank you, Steve. And Luana Montgomery, would you please answer this question? Thank you. Um, my honor. RT, we know, do have some problems. I think we need to work on the problems that we have. Energy is the number one issue, and being able to fuel those, those um, uh, buses right now. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is make sure that we have green technology and that these buses have the fuel that they need so that they can be on the road and not off the road or on the side. Another um, thing I'd like to do is make sure that we have something similar to BART, our regional transit uh, connectors, because I have a business and I work in Lodi, I work in Stockton, I work in Fairfield, and I work in places like Oakland. I need to have um, accessibility and accessibility to these areas. So we need to have some sort of a massive transit system that will allow us to have, uh, be able to get to and from these places. So energy is the main factor. We have to make sure that we have these um, type of energies uh, at our access. Thank you. Thank you, Lawana. We will go to the next question. Jim Cox, would you please direct the first, to the first Candidate Michael Leary. Elk Grove has uh, started the process to put over 10,000 additional acres under its um, sphere of influence. Many environmental groups and other area local government officials have expressed concern that Elk Grove's expansion will lead to additional sprawl and loss of open space. <laughs> Opponents of your expansion argue that Elk Grove should develop open space within its should develop open space within its borders before you expand. What is your position um, on the city's plan to expand its sphere of influence versus developing existing land within its borders? A uh, good question. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that the city of Elk Grove is the, uh, was the first city to do the acre for acre for Swainson's Hawk mitigation. Uh, after we did in fact initiate that, the city of Sacramento followed in line with that and the county of Sacramento did as well. So we now have an acre for acre uh, land bank for um, uh, maintaining uh, open space. 
that particular um, expansion that you're referring to actually is something that we are looking to, the majority of that land would be passive land use uh, for uh, maybe soccer fields, uh, tr horse trails and things like that. Obviously with the uh, Consumnes River that's there, there's not a whole lot of growth that you, can, uh, that you can't build on a lot of that land because obviously when we found out in 90, I think it was 96 or 97, when we had the floods, a lot of that area goes underwater. Uh, so there's a, there would be very, I would uh, suggest to you there's not very much land that would be able to be built on. And so my take on that whole, uh, that whole expansion is looking at uh, the future of Elk Grove and, uh, and looking at uh, some, some excellent um, uh, office space and some other commercial land use. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Jim Cooper. I grew up in Rancho Cordova. I've been in Sacramento since 1964 and got to experience the American River Parkway. Grew up on there. And the area south of Elk Grove, we don't intend to build upon. It's a floodplain, but we need our own American River Parkway down there. And by bringing this up, we've gotten in discussions with Sacramento County and Galt, and it's brought those folks to the table where the idea is being kicked around and discussed now about building a parkway down there, trails, and make it accessible to our citizens. And that's really the big thing down there. Otherwise, it's going to sit there. Um, it should never be built upon. I think the council agrees upon that, and I support that. But there needs to be some passive activity, um, recreational or a walking tour, just like the Stone Lakes Refuge. So something that needed, and I think in the end, and right now, it has brought the county and got to the table to discuss the issue. Otherwise, if it had never been bought up, we wouldn't be discussing it right now. So I believe we're headed in the right direction, and emphatically, we will never build there. Thank you, Jim. Catherine? Thank you very much. There are currently many reasons why I'm opposed to the pr proposed expansion. To name a few, development within the proposed expansion will have a substantial adverse effect on the rural character of the existing environment. It substantially degrades the existing farmland an open space, visual character and quality. Approximately 90% of the land in the proposed expansion area is prime farmland, unique farmland, or farmland statewide of local importance. The area includes winter roosting and foraging areas for the greater Sandhill Crane as well as nesting and foraging ground and nesting trees for the Swainson's Hawk, both of which are threatened species under the California Endangered Species Act. And finally, the proposed expansion conflicts with both the Sacramento Area Council of Governments 2035 Metropolitan Transportation Plan and the City's General Plan. Both of these plans show capacity for employment and housing growth within the current city limits through 2035. Further, SACOG's 2050 blue blueprint growth pattern projects capacity for another 19,000 employees and 1,500 housing units. These projections point to sufficient land inventory for the next 42 years, bring into question the need for bringing additional land into, into the SOI at this time. This proposed project proposes significant, irreversible, adverse aspects on the environment resulting from loss of farmlands, floodplain, habitat, and open space. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And KT Chan. Thank you. I think that if we pay fair market value for the land, I think we should annex it. Um, uh, there's an environmental impact, but we can build a friendly environment, you know, we can develop so that way we can accommodate the, in, the environment. And where, you know, you've seen cities around the world where they have, you know, building built on top of water, you know, and so if we can create art out of this <coughs> development and take advantage of this land. We can uh, create housing projects, we can um, create industrial office space. But I, I think that um, if the landowner feels like they want to sell at a fair market price and the city purchase it, I think we have the right to move forward, but also be conscious of the environment and also create um, a un as, you know, create some uh, opportunity where, where we can coexist with, with uh, the environment, with the, the animals, and as well as people. Thank you. Thank you. We will move on to the next question. Loretta, would you please first direct the next question to Sophia Sherman. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to ask you about uh, Laguna Ridge, which is another area of uh, a sore, very sore economic point for the city of Elk Grove. What um, incentives do you see that would be possible to do something about uh, Laguna Ridge or Madera to uh, get, get things kick-started there? Thank you. Uh, first of all, we are already working on lowering the fees. We are really looking at them. Uh, you know, the fees were, were high at the very beginning, but now the way the economy has taken a, a, a downturn, we need to work uh, very diligently to find ways to uh, get the developers or the builders to come in and finish the project. 
we do have the infrastructure is already in, so once they start getting ready to build, it'll go and it'll move quite quickly. The other thing is we, we do have uh, sewer credits, and we're going to be um, uh, offering those to the, uh, to the builders as well. Um, right now, uh, because it's the winter, it doesn't show too much, but come springtime, uh, we do have to keep our eye on, on that area, basically because we don't want it to become just a vacant piece of land. Uh, I, I am very optimistic that uh, things will start popping again come uh, springtime. But we, the city, are doing everything and working with the developers to uh, assist them in making sure that uh, Laguna Ridge is developed in the right manner the way it was planned to begin with. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Steve Detrick, would you please answer the same question? Yes, <clears throat> Laguna Ridge, it's also known as Madeira. Uh, I think one of the uh, lost issues we have is some of that land can be rezoned. I would look, like to look at the feasibility of rezoning some of that to office commercial. Because one, <clears throat> one of the areas that we're definitely behind in is our ratio of residential to jobs in Elk Grove. So I think that would give us a perfect location to draw. It's close to the freeways. It's got great access. To go along with what Sophia said, keeping the taxes low, reducing fees, and cutting the red tape to get applications through the process, then we'd be able to attract more quality jobs, <clears throat> excuse me, and more quality businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Luana? Yes. The Madeira project is one of the first projects, I believe, that the Elk Grove City Council um, can take credit for saying that they are the ones put this project together and made sure that the infrastructure, the development, and everything went into place. Well, of course we see some downsizing, but there are many things that need to be done there. Taxes are too high. As a business owner, my first um, plan is to definitely draw and attract new businesses. And in order for us to do that, we have to take care of the existing businesses that we already have and then take a look at how we can bring more business into Elk Grove. Um, we have properties now, vacant lots, that are sitting there and people cannot purchase them because the prices are too high. We went up too quick. And so these are some things we need to look at, address, and make changes and make sure something like this never happens again. Thank you. And Robert Feltz, will you please address the same question? Well, I think the uh, Madeira project is just another example of how Elk Grove has hooked its uh, fortune and its future uh, economic prosperity to real estate. And it was a mistake. There's no question about it. And uh, I agree uh, with Luana that we're going to have to, uh, as with the uh, Elk Grove Promenade, we're going to have to work with the developers to, to salvage this thing. And uh, it's not going to be done overnight. There's no question about it. None of these things are going to take place in just an instant. And that's why I first thing I want to do is uh, establish our economic stability before we go out. And uh, I want to address this question that I was skipped on. Annexing or, or expansion, I think we need to use an area of what I call very cautious optimism in, in that area. Otherwise, uh, we could end up with another Madeira project as far as that's concerned. We have a kind of a little eyesore out there right now and there's not a whole lot of activity going on, but that'll probably change in the next four to five years. Thank you. Jeff Ford, if you would please address the next question first to Jim Cooper. Elk Grove could arguably say it faces many of the same crime problems that other <laughs> big cities and suburbs in California face. The city recently hired a new police chief from Eugene, Oregon, who's never lived in the state of California. Is this a wise decision by the city for the safety of our community? You want to go out? Uh, the best person possible. We did a nationwide search. Um, our new city manager, Laura Gill, came out and picked him. So I have every confidence in her ability and who she picked. We're a growing city. Right now, 43% of our budget, our general fund budget, goes to the police department. Two years ago, we added a 10 officer gang unit and narcotics unit at over a million and a half dollars that wasn't budgeted for. So we take law enforcement seriously. We have a great police department. And if Elk Grove wasn't safe, I wouldn't be there. My kids wouldn't be there. And that kind of gets in my craw when people talk about how dangerous it is. And Elk Grove was no different than any other city. 
All cities have crime problems, and we're a big city. We do have our problems. They're not that severe. If you look around at the murder rate in other areas and the crime rate, elk growth is very low, and we want to keep, keep it that way, and that's why we keep funding programs. We just opened a PAL recently, a police athletic league for our children to go to. Um, Technology-wise, we have computers that can tell us where each officer is. So they can dispatch the closest officer, officer to that call. So when you look around the region and at other police departments in Elk Grove, Elk Grove PD is head and shoulders above those other agencies. Thank you, Jim. Catherine? Thank you very much. Safety has been a challenge in our neighborhoods. We need to jumpstart our city government to keep families safe and protect the welfare of our community. We need to both control crime in our neighborhoods and educate our youth to the dangers of drug use and criminal activity. When looking at how we can best identify who is qualified to stand behind our city, I think it's important that we are forward thinking in many of our decisions and in determining who is the best to run our police. I feel it was a very important decision and an important move to fire some, I'm sorry, to hire someone who was best qualified to serve our community because we do have a lot of new concerns that we've yet to address, but we want to make sure that we're forward thinking and making sure we do the best for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. KT Tran. Thank you. I think that uh, a job of a police chief is to implement the policy, the safety policy that is instituted by the, the city council. And so uh, as a police chief who is the CEO of that branch, uh, has a job to do things right. And as city council, we have a job to do the right thing. Now hiring the, uh, I think that the focus on crime, uh, I think all police chiefs and all police officers are heroes to me and they all do a good job and they put, they're always in the front line. So what we need to do is to help them, not only do we you know, uh, support our police, we also need to in improve programs like after school sport activities to put some money into to, um, you know, public uh, nonprofit organizations <laughs> that will help kids and give them jobs. And I, can, I mean, when kids are not at a program or doing something at school, they're out on the street you know, doing things like the crime and involving drugs. So we need to support our kids. We need to support our schools. We need to support our community to combine that effort with the police department to fight crime. And that's, I think, um, how we can solve this issue. Thank you. And Sophia, will you please address the same question? Yes, thank you. Two years ago, the city of Elk Grove formed a new police force. It was designed to meet the needs of the citizens of Elk Grove. <clears throat> we have a state-of-the-art communication center. We have a, a, a great gang unit. We have, uh, uh, which are a lot of them are, as you know, are undercovers. The our police force is also addressing graffiti, vandalism, gangs, and, and illegal street racing. Our police force is well trained and committed to protect the citizens of Elk Grove, and to answer to any mutual aid that any other city calls for. Together, we, excuse me, <coughs> together we are accomplishing what everyone wishes for, a safe city for our citizens and a safe city for our businesses who want to move to Elk Grove. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, will you please address <coughs> the next question first to Steve Detrick. Okay. Um, you mentioned in your um, last answer that one of the challenges facing Elk Grove is that there are not enough good paying jobs within um, your borders, which means more people have to commute to work. Um, what would you do to try to promote, what policies would you promote to bring more good paying jobs to Elk Grove? First of all, uh, building relationships in the region, I think is very important. Uh, I've been on Mayor Davis's advisory team for the past two years. Uh, we've been working with government agencies uh, the state of California to bring some very large uh, employee, the state of California obviously being one of the largest employers in the region. Uh, we have approximately between 12 and 15,000 uh, state employees that live in Elk Grove. So I think my first objective would be to bring one of those large city agencies or state agencies, excuse me, to Elk Grove. Uh, I personally have uh, one of my very good friends is one of the directors at the state of California. We've actually been sitting down, uh, Gary Davis and I, and working that relationship, and that potentially would bring uh, a thousand new jobs to Elk Grove. So that's that's the number one focus that, that I have. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Lawana, would you please answer the same question? Can I ask that you repeat the question? 
there's um, many people say there's an imbalance between the number of residents and jobs in Elk Grove and that one of the challenges facing Elk Grove is to bring more good paying jobs within um, the city and what policies would you promote to bring good paying jobs to Elk Grove? Okay, as a business owner, I'm the CEO and president of the Reach Learning Center and in every city that I'm in, I manage to increase employment. One of the, uh, also I was the first vice president of the Sacramento Women's Council working with many of the surrounding mayors of Sacramento and other cities. Um, what we need to make sure we do is have, a, uh, we have a lot of strip malls. We have a lot of businesses that are there, but we don't have high tech jobs. We don't have the jobs that's of the future. What I'd like to be able to do is bring some of those jobs and create um, places that our Elk Grove citizens can go as opposed to going out of the city. All right, we know we had Apple Computer, it moved away. I wanna be able to bring some of those type of industries back to Elk Grove, and I think I'm the person that can do it. I've successfully been able to create jobs in my own business, so I know I would be successful in bringing those high-tech, high-paying jobs to Elk Grove. Thank you. Robert Feltz. This is one of the things that I think that we really need to take a close look at. We. Um, we like, that's a common question that I've been asked, and I think that first before we do that, we have to establish the economic stability I was talking about. My concentration uh, when, I, when I'm elected is going to be to make sure we keep the businesses we do have. I was down in uh, Old Town Elk Grove a couple of weeks ago talking to all the business owners down there, and the, there were two of them that are preparing to go out of business right now. One is already gone. These are the folks we need to be looking at right now. We don't need to be looking uh, 10 years down the road as how we're gonna bring some big industrial park in here. Not at this moment, we can plan for that. But right now we need to take care of what we have. And right now we've got a lot of businesses in Elk Grove that are suffering in this economic downturn that the nation has had. I think we should address that. Uh, we can have forums once again with business owners to find out exactly what they want. They can voice their, their problems and they can also voice potential solutions that they've thought of. We get our committee to address those solutions and go from there. And I can talk more about that later. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Michael Leary. I'm proud to say that uh, as a council member and making decisions in, with the city council, we've created over 10,000 new jobs since we've been a city uh, starting in 2000. We've created an economic development corporation. We put our money where our mouth is, $750,000 to that development corporation to not only bring new, new jobs, professional jobs to the community, but to maintain what we currently have. We've also committed to uh, Sutter M uh, Medical Hospital. They're gonna, bring, they're gonna expand down there. They're gonna bring um, a, a few hundred new professional jobs down there. And everybody knows when a hospital comes into town, uh, a bigger hospital, as they continue to expand, other professional jobs come with that. So we've got these measures in place that are in fact going to create a, an economic uh, windfall down there for the city of Elk Grove. We were hoping, obviously, that the uh, the mall would have come in and, and created a lot of new businesses and a lot of new jobs down there. That's going to happen, I think, in, two, in within a two-year period of time. They've committed uh, over $100 million to that facility. I don't think they're backing out anytime soon. So we have created a, a, an economic engine down there, and I look forward to continuing that. Thank you. Thank you. Loretta, would you please first direct the next question to Catherine Maestras? Good morning. Uh, this is another economic type question. We have seen and read a lot of stories in the paper over the last year about uh, Elk Grove and the large problem it has had with foreclosures. People are really hurting and, um, and the job losses are um, uh, hitting Elk Grove as hard as anywhere else. Um, what can or what should the city do to address this issue beyond holding meetings. Uh, you know, we have a, the city has a um, low income uh, housing plan for uh, people who are uh, under uh, employed or who don't make a full minimum wage or full wages. Uh, so we get involved, the city gets involved in that fashion. What should or can the city do to help people who are middle class and losing their homes? Very good, thank you for your question. This 
question is very personal to me because as it came out yesterday in the October 3 issue of the Elk Grove Citizen, my family and I did experience <coughs> foreclosure ourselves last year. Now, that made a difficult decision for me whether or not to run, but I have to say it was still important for me to run because my story is that we were impacted by my health. I have a heart condition and I lost my income for that reason, and it's difficult to right the boat. Families are struggling across the board. Elk Grove citizens are suffering due to economic climate. And we need a real voice to really stand up on these issues, someone who can very personally say, you know what, it's, it's not often your fault, it's often life um, coming at you, and what can you do to address these problems? Well, I propose that Elk Grove gets proactive in collaborating with banks, business, government, and community, not just to talk about the problem, but rather to form strong collaborations to identify regional strategies and solutions to approach our challenges. We can work with the legislature for more legislative approaches. We can work with the community to provide real solutions, but work closely and hands-on so that we do come up with solutions to truly represent the citizens of Elk Grove. Thank you. Thank you. KT Chen. Thank you. I want to start saying it's the economy, but uh, uh, going with that said, you know, Elk Grove, this is not, there are times when government can cut revenues, can cut services when we are over expanding and doing things that we're investing in things that are like the HRAN that doesn't produce return on investment. However, in these critical times, it's not a time to cut, it's a time to invest. It's time to create new zoning, uh, create an incentive to bring businesses to Elk Grove, like for example, investing in auto plant, uh, hydrogen fuel cell, which is the future uh, of uh, American automotive technology. If we invest in it today, any, all the business that sell to the auto plant will create and spur economic progress here in the region. And when people have jobs, you know, they'll spend and they'll buy homes and they'll fill those foreclosure houses. And another thing is that when they start spending, we'll increase government revenue. When we have government revenue, we can spend more and, and invest more in, in projects to help our citizens. And this is what I believe that we need to set a vision, we need to have a mission, and we need to pursue that. Thank you. Thank you. Sophia? Thank you very much. As a council member for the last going on four years, I have had a monthly breakfast meeting every first Tuesday of the month where we address all and any issues. And it's an open forum. People just come by, sit down, have a cup of coffee, and visit with me. I took the initiative to set up monthly neighborhood workshops to discuss the housing crisis, uh, educating the, the citizens on the resources available to them uh, if they're faced, and maybe they have a neighbor that's being faced with foreclosure. I've been working with the neighborhoods to address the safety, health, and aesthetic concerns of empty houses. I'm establishing a team to take care of abandoned homes. The city has established a team, it's called our co uh, code enforcement and or code enhancement, who are working very diligently in combating blight and preventing the decline of neighborhood home values. Thank you very much. Thank you. Steve Dutcher. This is a very, very important issue. Uh, over the last eight years, there's been out of control growth in Elk Grove. Because of that out of control growth, we have a disproportional amount of foreclosures in Elk Grove. To be tagged as the number one growing city in the United States, uh, now that's why we're the, one of the number one in foreclosure. Getting back, we have an imbalance between jobs in Elk Grove and the residential situation. So we need to get more jobs back in Elk Grove. But to do that, we're gonna have to get tough on crime. Uh, I disagree with uh, Mr. Cooper. I, I've been here since 1990 and I've seen Elk Grove deteriorate in its quality of life. It's still a great city, it's a critical point. We need to get tough on crime, we need to get more officers on the street, we need to get code enforcement involved so we can get into the neighborhoods and look at all the little issues and why they're there, they can use their senses of sight, smell, hearing, and they can address all the bigger crimes at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, will you please direct the next question first to Luana Montgomery. When the city incorporated in 2000, one of the main reasons given was more local control for a better quality of life. Has this been accomplished in the past eight years? Thank you, Jeff, and I am so glad that you asked me the question first. No, it hasn't. 
In the last eight years, I've seen the worst um, problems happening in Elk Grove. I moved to Elk Grove because it had a sense of community, it had a sense of belonging, and it had a sense of all of us working together to make a better Elk Grove. Since I've been there and since the incorporation, we've seen a downsize in the economy. We've seen people losing their jobs. We've seen foreclosures. I was one of the ones who was also affected by foreclosure. So yes, that personally hit me. But I took it on. And you know what? I went after the person who used and abused the real estate laws. I'm still fighting that person in court now. I'm the kind of person who stands up for the, com the community. I want to make sure we have change. I want to make sure we have a voice that represents all people. And I want to make sure when you say you are a city, that you continue to run as a city, but not on an out of control city. Thank you. Robert Feltz, will you please answer the same question? Okay, and that, that question was uh, about uh, the quality of life. When the city of Elk Grove incorporated, one of the main reasons given was more local control for a better quality of life. Do you think this has been achieved in the last eight years? Well, to a certain extent it has. I, uh, you know, we can't uh, point the finger at the city council uh, over the last eight years for everything. We've gone from a city that was 56,000 people in 2001 when we incorporated, not 2000, 2001 when we incorporated. and. Um, uh, we're now about 140,000. I mean, obviously, uh, it takes a lot of work to keep up with something like that. I think the main mistake we made along the way here is what I've said before, is hooking our fortune to real estate. And that, that's why we have the uh, houses we have right now. It's not going to resolve itself overnight. It's just not going to do it. And anybody that tells you they're going to get on the city council and solve this problem is frank, quite frankly pushing hot air because it's just going to take some time. And um, you've got to be realistic about this. And, and uh, it, it's going to take a lot of meetings. And Ms. Calva said she didn't want to hear about meetings. But uh, for the foreclosure thing, for example, we're going to have to work with the banks if we're ever going to solve this. Hopefully, with this national bailout plan that we just had, there will be some money trickling down to take care of some of these things. And it's going to help our banks locally out. The main thank problem we've had recently is that we Robert, haven't had any thank money. You. Thank you. I beg your pardon? Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Michael Leary? As a, um, in regards to the question, uh, do we have better local control and uh, better quality of life? Absolutely. I was a patrol officer that worked the city of Elk Grove prior to becoming a city back in the 1990s. The county of Sacramento had approximately 35 patrol officers assigned down there in, to, to the city of Elk Grove prior to becoming a city. In 2000, we increased the law enforcement services substantially. We currently have about 125 uh, sworn officers uh, assigned to the city of Elk Grove. We have nine officers assigned to our gang unit. The, city, uh, the county of Sacramento has six. So uh, just to put things in perspective, uh, the citizens of Elk Grove are openly coming to council meetings and expressing their concerns about what's going on in the community. They don't have to come down to the, this, this chamber here, the Board of Supervisors chambers, to uh, address their concerns. Uh, the people are calling our council members individually and expressing their concerns. And quite frankly, I think that's the best in, in a form of government. Uh, we have $14.2 million in our surplus in our, in, our, in our budget. I think that shows as well that uh, as far as the local control and, and quality of life, we're absolutely making positive changes. Thank you. Thank you. And Jim Cooper. Local control. My cell phone number has been published in the paper for the last six years in the Elk Grove Citizen and the Sacramento B. PD. We have 125 officers, significantly more than when the Sheriff's Department was involved. E-Tran, when RT was down there, they had two morning routes, commuter routes, that came downtown and two evening routes. Right now, E-Tran is the number one in ridership in the nation as far as growth goes. Gas prices are high. People are riding the bus. We've got growth there. Madera, it's empty right now of houses, but the streets are there, schools there, and parks there. It never happened in Sacramento County. That's what other cities and counties looked for now, to go ahead and make developers pay their way. That school was paid for by developer fees, not by fees from citizens. Developer fees, high school and middle school are there and built and ready to go. This economy bounces back. Those streets are in already, parks are in already. So as far as local control, yeah, I do see a lot of local control with that. And um, it's only getting better with that. And citizens are becoming more involved, so is it all the way there yet? No, but I think we've got it. We've come a long ways since 2000. 
Thank you. Because we have such a diverse group of candidates, both incumbents and challengers, we're going to offer the panelists an opportunity to ask each candidate an individual question. This will be followed by a little extra time for each candidate to address issues that you were not able to speak to because you were not able to answer each and every question. So I will start with Loretta, if you will start this, and please address a question to Robert Feltz. Hello again. Uh, you've here, lived here long enough to um, to uh, see the, uh, the the terrible congestion that's going on in the city of Elk Grove. What, what what difference would you make if you were elected uh, uh, to the council next year? What difference could you uh, make as uh, independent of what the others might do? Well, um, we're going to have to plan for the future in that. And once again, this is not going to happen overnight either. I think we need a link for, to the uh, to the light rail for one thing to bring to help us out in that area. And uh, unfortunately, we, we, we let our growth get away from us, and that's why Highway 99 is so congested, and then people go all the way over to five. There's not a whole lot we can do about it right now. I mean, there's no, going to be no money from the state to broaden the, broaden the roads or anything in the, in the near future. Um, I do think that uh, we're going to have to make a long-term plan somehow, to, and maybe it's going to involve a bond issue later on. Not now. We don't need debt right now, a debt load but probably a bond issue sometime in, when we get back on our financial feet to uh, bring the light rail over here and help us out. That's our main problem. They ran the light rail over to uh, Meadowview. They should have brought it down to Elk Grove. We were the fastest growing uh, city in the United States, not Meadowview. Thank you. Jeff, would you please ask a question to Michael Leary? Uh, Mr. Leary, as you pointed out several times during the forum, you're a graduate of Elk Grove High on Flat Pack Community Services District and in Elk Grove City Council. Many of your opponents and other people in the community say you're not qualified. What do you say to those critics? Well, I'd match my qualifications up to anybody. I think that uh, the, the last eight years, I've been elect, obviously elected to uh, numerous uh, levels of government, forms of government. I've served, served down the community for 18 years. I, I keep getting reelected, so quite frankly, I think that uh, the community likes what I've been doing. Uh, I, I match, again, my experience, background, uh, education to any, any candidate. I have a master's degree in business. Uh, that's gone a long way as far as making decisions down there. Uh, my kids are down there. My family's down there. My parents are down there. Um, they belong to the senior center. Uh, I, I mean, there's so much involvement within my, uh, my, my family that, uh, quite frankly, I think that, uh, again, I don't know of any other candidate that's sitting up here that can say that, uh, that all, they have the background, knowledge, experience, and education that I do. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, would you please direct a question to Jim Cooper? Yeah. Um, the city council has formed a charter commission, develop a new city charter for Elk Grove. What provisions would you like to see included in this new charter? Um, for example, would you prefer a strong mayor or a city council manager type of system? Well, the biggest thing is education. A lot of folks don't know. Some folks thought that the mayor was directly elected and they didn't realize the mayor is appointed amongst the council members. So the big thing I, from what I'm getting from people and the feedback is they want a directly elected mayor. And one of the great things about this Charter Commission is the citizens come and they get to have their input and their say-so, and then eventually it'll come to the council. But that's the number one thing. And also the question, do you expand council districts? Do you want a runoff? Obviously the primary is in June, but do you want a November runoff if someone does not glean 50% plus one? That's a big issue amongst the citizens, and we value their input on that. Um, also districts. Right now, it's, it's weird because in Elk Grove, it's funny how Sister Heights and Rancho Incorporated and LAFCO had it where you run and you're voted by at large. But when Elk Grove Incorporated, you run by district and you're voted for at at by at large. It really doesn't make any sense. So our big thing is to get community input and see what they want. And we're headed that way. It's a great thing and the citizen involvement we value. So directly elected mayor, absolutely. And probably voting by district. Thank you. Loretta, will you please direct a question to Catherine Maestras. Okay, on uh, Wednesday of last week, the Elk Grove City Council voted to issue subpoenas to get the financial records of the Elk Grove Teen Center after questions uh, arose about uh, their financing or bookkeeping practices. Um, I was surprised in talking to those individuals who run that organization that they don't have uh, audits regularly from the city of Elk Grove. 
And uh, I wondered, um, and, they, and that, com that group has received $79,000 each of the last two years. So uh, what controls do you think the city should put in place to uh, safeguard its own contributions to community groups? Fantastic. Thank you for the question. I did attend that meeting Wednesday night, and there are several questions I have in my own mind. First of all, we should have something in place that does ensure that any city monies that are going out are to be accounted for. Now, it, it, this is a, t a, a tricky issue because if we start also claiming audits of every nonprofit in Elk Grove that receives funding, well, this is a very costly expense. This is a 5,000 expense to a nonprofit that may not have much bigger of a budget. So what we need to make sure we do is really keep an eye on how can we best monitor the money. Um, we need to find some kind of balance and really question, I guess I'm really questioning why this is coming up at this time if, if the discussion started in February that something could be going on with this. We need to make sure that we are supporting our local nonprofits, that there is some kind of mechanism in place to track the funding, but not at the detriment of our nonprofits, because it's critical that we support their efforts because they support so many services that are within our city. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Jeff, will you please direct a question to KT Tran? Uh, Mr. Tran, during your candidacies for the SMUD District 4 as well as Elk Grove City Council, you've been a big advocate of green technology and bringing green technology businesses to Elk Grove. Given the difficulties of rezoning and the lack of open land, where would you propose to put these facilities? That's a very good question. and um, <clears throat> I think that the, f the first thing is, is that there are a lot of lands in Elk Grove. I I've did a geographical survey in the areas, and yes, there's a lot of re zoning um, that needs to be done and in this case you probably need to do some kind of survey with the uh, Elk Grove residential see where uh, we should build these industrial complexes like for example for hydrogen fuel cell again what I, I'm going back to saying what we're doing is we're doing we're, we want to invest in Elk Grove and, and invest will require a collaboration from all cities and as well as city government and all entities um, if we want to have jobs that are you know we, if we want to have job that will replace the job that's going away job that will stay here, the new wave of job in green tech from hydrogen fuel cell, we need to invest and we need to sacrifice. And there's some areas that we can do that. And, uh, and, and um, in, in my candidacy, I will push for, for growth, for economic growth, stability. And that's how we solve the, the um, uh, foreclosure issue. That's how we bring jobs to the area. And there's some sacrifice that have to be, that have to be made. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, will you please direct a question to Sophia Sherman? Um, local governments in California have to balance the ability to attract <laughs> qualified employees by offering competitive salary and benefit packages with being fiscally um, responsible. Um, how well do you think Elk Grove has, um, has balanced these two um, competing demands? And um, is there anything you'd like to change? Well, there's a lot of things I'd like to change. but in as a council member and an elected official, I can't. I have to follow the law. What I'm saying is we have done everything possible. We have partnered with the EDC. We have partnered with the medical community to bring their businesses to town. We have jobs in the lower paying jobs that are okay because we've got you know high school kids, we have seniors, we have veterans uh, that won't need a uh, you know, part-time job to, to help them out. But as far as bringing the high paying jobs, that's what we're working with with the EDC and SACTO. Working together with them, we can bring the high paying jobs once we address and show them that we are a safe city. That is the prime thing that we have to show as far as the foreclosures. We are not the largest at this point in time, but I don't like it even if we're the third largest. But we are, I am working on that as well as working very diligently with the EDC to make sure that the jobs we bring to Elk Grove are high paying so they can afford to provide for their families. Thank you. Thank you. Loretta, will you please direct a question to Steve Detrick? Yes, um, I'm gonna follow up on something you said about uh, rezoning in uh, Laguna Ridge, Madera, uh, in an effort to get things moving again and to bring in more, <coughs> I think you said, um, uh, office commercial. Uh, the, there's a little history here in the Elk Grove area. When it was part of Sacramento County, uh, Laguna West uh, had a planned community, uh, was a planned community, and um, the downturn 
some decades ago, I think it might have been the 70s or 80s, a downturn hit in the middle of that project. And so the project was changed. And in the end, it was quite a different um, uh, area than what the planners had envisioned. Uh, what, how, aren't you afraid uh, rezoning in Laguna Ridge and then tearing up the plan and starting over opens the door to a different sort of community that uh, is not what um, the city of Elk Grove hoped it would be? I think you need to keep a balance on everything. You know, you mentioned Laguna. The same issue happened between Sacramento and Elk Grove. It was supposed to be a commercial green belt. Uh, I believe it's called the Calvine SPA. That was all converted to residential homes. That, the, the problem we've had is we've had a lot of commercial office property that's been rezoned to residential. And that's why we're extremely disproportionate. It's very difficult to attract some of these large employers when you don't have the facilities or the zoning of property that's available to them. So we, that's why I think taking a portion of Madeira and you balance it with office commercial, tie it in with the civic center that's proposed, commercial that's already uh, zoned around there, as well as the re residential, and have just a beautiful blend of all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, will you please direct a question to Lawana Montgomery? Uh, Ms. Montgomery, four years ago, you challenged Jim Cooper in the election and lost handily. What did you learn from that experience, and what's different about your candidacy now? Well, what's different about my candidacy now is, first of all, I'd like to speak on qualifications. I'm overly qualified for the position of city council. I am a business owner, a widow, and mother of twins who are 14 years old. Um, I challenged Jim Cooper in 2004. I was a newcomer, and mostly the incumbents win in that kind of a situation. As we can see, all of them are sitting on the seat again for the, the, the last four years. What I'm doing differently now is I have a new voice. Um, I'm not a new face because people recognize me from the old election. Um, community looks for change right now, and we're saying it's past due, just like the past due bills. Um, I don't know how many of you in here who have bills that come in and saying that, you know what, it's past due. Well, change is past due too, and I'm that person for the change to get the job done. In my company, I've made changes. It's successful. As a mom, I'm successful. As a community leader, I would be successful. Thank you. And now I'd like to give each of the candidates a one minute time to address anything that you have not been able to address because of the time limitation and the fact that you did not have each question directed to each one of you. So I would like to actually start with Luana Montgomery. You have one minute. Okay. Um, I guess because I didn't really get a chance to address or introduce myself. I did say that my name is Luana Montgomery, and I'm definitely one who's running for community for the change, and I believe it is past due. It is our voice, it is our candidate, and it is our vote. And if we want to have a successful city, a thriving city, then we need to vote for change. If we want to continue the old status quo, things is the same, and pretend that we have our heads in a hole and we don't see things that are happening, then I say, you know what? Continue to vote for what you have. Because if that's all you are willing to accept, fine. I tell my children reach high. I never lower the bar. I always expect them to look for better ways to do better things. So if you want better things, you want to see a better city, then you need to vote for change. And that's Luana Montgomery. Thank you. Steve? You're going in reverse order on me. OK. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, one of the issues, obviously, is uh, that we've had a 250% increase in residents over the last eight years. Uh, that, that almost mirrors what we've had with our increase in police officers. So, the, you know, that, that goes hand in hand. 
I am a little confused with the uh, statement that Mr. Leary is saying that they brought 10,000 new jobs to Elk Grove. Uh, according to the, the state figures that there since 2000, there's been approximately 3,400 jobs additional, which is approximately a 10% increase. So we've had a 10% increase in jobs with a 250% increase in residents. Uh, doesn't take a rocket science to figure out why we're having a disproportional uh, commercial to or job base to our residential base. Uh, you know, I, I measure somebody not by their words, but by their actions and their effectiveness. And as a citizen, I think I've been more effective than many of the people we have on our city council. Uh, we've, we've had the opportunity to bring many uh, issues, concerns, ordinances and proposals forward that have ultimately been adopted by the city. Thank you. Thank you. Sophia Sherman. Thank, thank you. I'd like to address the issue about the teen center. This issue regarding the audit and the money that was misappropriated uh, was known by the board in November of last year. I came on board in February and that's when I found out after looking at the budget at a retreat that things were not right. The balance wasn't there. I was not able to bring it out to the public, especially to my fellow council members, because the board issued more or less a gag order only because the YFC was going to conduct their audit. I felt at that time that the truth would come out. Recently, <coughs> they, they have denied that information to the, uh, to the uh, Teen Center Board, which I'm a member now, I'm an alternate, and they have denied access to that information. When I was given that information, I brought it immediately to my city attorney and to the full council last week. That is why we are subpoenaing uh, several uh, documents and also a grand jury investigation. You know, we're not a perfect city, but I will continue to work towards that goal. I will cont continue to serve the citizens of Elk Grove as I have in the past. I will also continue to be the voice of our seniors, our veterans, and our youth. And I am running for District 5 re-election. Thank you. Thank you. KT Chan. Uh, thank you. I'd like to uh, begin with my qualification and, and biography, then, then close out with what I want for Elk Grove. I have a bachelor and master in management. I'm a college instructor at National University. Uh, Phoenix. Um, I'm also a real estate broker in my family owned business. I work as an engineer, IT, high tech consultant for HP. Um, former coordinator for um, San Joaquin County Office of Education, which I manage the Joint Power Act, which I'm very, I have a lot of experience in, in you know, Joint Power Act. Also, I'm a former IT manager for Eastside Union, Union High School District in San Jose. And a lot of people ask me, why am I running? And I said, what I want for Elk Grove, and this is what I want. It's really simple. I want to bring green tech to Elk Grove. I want at least, at least one auto plant and all the industry to support it in Elk Grove or in the surrounding region. So that way they can employ thousands of people and a source of income for Elk Grove citizens and surrounding businesses that sell to the auto plants. I want to create an infrastructure to support fuel cell because without the infrastructure, you know, there's no market for fuel cell cars. Um, and this infrastructure will, will produce uh, hydrogen you know, refueling stations and, and uh, complexes that will help expand our, uh, help our city grow and invest in our, our, uh, our jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Catherine? Thank you very much. I started off my interest in local activism as a young mom with baby in arms attending local community meetings and I was very frustrated even pre-cityhood with what I'd seen. The residents of Elk Grove are engaged, they're educated, they love and understand their city and they deserve to have a voice. I acquired my voice through being involved. That's how I got on Flack Pack. That's how I became a planning commissioner for the county representing Elk Grove. And my experience has taught me so much. One is that now as a city, we do not have local control. Citizens do not have real voices when they do attend city council meetings. And the example of planning, as a planning commissioner for the county, we denied many projects that once they came to the city of Elk Grove upon incorporation were rubber stamped. I feel this is just a tragedy for our community. I'm running because I want to be a true voice for the residents. I will be accessible, available, and I represent you. My husband and I have been raising our children there for many years. We plan to stay and we want to have the kind of community that you want to have. Catherine Maestas, thank you. Thank you. Jim Cooper. I'm not running on a whim. I've been a public servant my whole life, 25 years in the sheriff's department. I've got a bachelor's in business management, a master's in organizational leadership. I'm a graduate of the FBI National Academy 
at West Point Leadership Institute. I've been involved in my community and my passion is kids. I've been on the board of directors for Boys and Girls Clubs, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Win Youth Services, and many others. When they wanted to build a Walmart in Elk Grove, I was the only council member that stood up and said, no, we don't need a Walmart here. That was me by myself. When city manager and city attorney wanted lifetime benefits, I stood up alone and said, no. I have a proven track record. I have proven leadership. I've been here. I'm not coming late to the game. I love to be involved. I love to serve the public. And that's been my calling. And I will retire that way. And please vote for me, Jim Cooper, city councilman for District 1. I'd be honored to have your vote. Michael Leary. Thank you. I've lived in Oak Grove since 1976 when there were 5,000 people in the community. I've uh, obviously seen this, the community and, and the eventual city in 2000 uh, uh, grow at a, at a uh, responsible rate. That was my, uh, I promoted responsible growth. Uh, without growth, we don't have our, our infrastructure, our schools, our, our, our uh, expansion of um, uh, roads, uh, our uh, infrastructure, uh, the whole gamut would not happen without responsible growth. I have a master's degree in business as well. We have created 10,000 new jobs per SACTO. Uh, uh, we plan for numerous expansion of new professional jobs coming to the city. Uh, we've got a balanced budget on time every time for eight years. That's unprecedented in, in government, unbelievable. And then to have a $14.2 million surplus is unbelievable. We've got the city of Sacramento at 58 million in the hole, the county of Sacramento 134 million in the hole. And we have Vallejo going bankrupt because they, they're paying their police and their fire department too much money. It's unbelievable, unprecedented what we're doing in the city of El Grove. Um, E-Tran, we've got a thousand, we went from a thousand riders to six thousand riders daily. That's unprecedented as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Robert Phelps. Yes, I'd like to uh, hit something I didn't get to say in the beginning, and that's my experience. I have seven years of project management and leadership and planning experience and general management experience. I have eight years of business management experience in addition to that and I had one year as a business owner in Elk Grove. And what I want to do is use this experience when I come to the city council to get us a new direction going here. And I don't want to do it by promising you some great big scheme that uh, is going to take uh, 15 years to implement. I want to get together and I want a, uh, an ad hoc committee made up of one person from the planning committee, uh, a planning commission, either one, one person from the city council, one person from the economic, uh, economic development corporation, and one person from the financial department to get together and uh, with the business leaders of this community and find out what their problems are. And then I want to uh, uh, use the scientific approach to this. You look at the problem, you identify the problem, you uh, propose solutions, you uh, pick a solution or solutions, then you go ahead and you implement those solutions and you evaluate them. And that's the process we have to do for our short-term survival. And don't let anybody kid you otherwise, we gotta do that first before we can have the long-term economic prosperity here one is speaking of here. Thank you. Um, many of you addressed both the issues and reviewed why you are a candidate. But I will give you a closing statement. And so I would like to um, start with Luana Montgomery. You have a one minute closing statement time. In closing, I would like to thank each and every one of you. I'd like to thank the City of Elk Grove, the Sacramento Women's League of, of uh, Women's Voters, our panel. And I'm running because I'm running for change. I'm an educator, um, early child development, uh, making sure that our streets are safe. I keep hearing that we have such a, uh, an unsafe city. I don't believe that. We have one of the best police force there is. I believe in public safety. I believe in education. I want to make education number one. I feel we've been shortchanged in that area. That is one of the reasons why I'm running. But more importantly, I'm running because we have to have change. It's not to say that what they're doing is wrong, what they've done, who's pointing fingers. It's not about that. It's about time for change and new leadership and a new direction. If you're looking for that, then I'm your candidate vote for Lawana Montgomery. Thank you. Steve Detrick. The city of Elk Grove has a code of ethics already on their books. I've gone publicly, whether I'm a citizen or a councilman, I'll abide by those code of ethics. Everything I do is based off of my core values of honesty, integrity, and morality. Because of those 
strong core values. I've received the endorsements of many of the citizens and citizens groups of Elk Grove, the Elk Grove Police Officers Association, and the Elk Grove's firefighters of Local 22. I honestly believe those endorsements became to me because of that honesty, integrity, and morality. Again, I want to thank the panel, the League of Women Voter, and everybody attending, as well as the audience, for listening today. And vote for Steve Detrick on November 4th, Elk Grove City Council, District 3. Thank you. Thank you. Sophia Sherman. Thank you very much. My experience, I didn't bring that up before, but I, have a, I had a business. I retired it when I went into politics. I didn't have the opportunity to go to college like many of my colleagues up here today. But you know what? I've gained the experience through personal, personal experiences. I love the city of Elk Grove. I work very hard for the citizens of Elk Grove, and I know that they appreciate it. Those that don't, I am sorry. You should call me and tell me what it is about me that you don't like or you would like me to do. It seems to me that I, people look and say, well, you sit on so many boards and commissions. Well, yes, I do. And the reason I do that is because that's where I gain my experience as well. I can work with all of these folks that sit on these boards and commissions and ask them questions when it comes time for me to make a decision that will affect the city of Elk Grove. We need representation on all these boards and commissions, and I will be there for the citizens of Elk Grove, as well as for our veterans, our seniors, and our youth, who are a great part of our great city of Elk Grove. I am Sophia Sherman Gonzalez. I am running for District 5, and I'm running for re-election. Thank you very much. Thank you. KT Tran. Thank you. I'd like to say that um, Elk Grove needs some new vision, some new experience on the Elk Grove City Council. I've been employed with Eastside Union High School District as a district manager since 1991. And in, in 2000, I, I worked for San Joaquin as an administrator for the county, as well as for the JPA. You know, I want you to think about when you go to, to vote on November 4th, I want you to think about the future and about our children's future. I, what we will do when all the jobs that we know get offshores outside to other countries? We need to invest today so new jobs will replace jobs that will not come back. I know that most of these are federal issues and state issues, but by the time it get to us, you know, how many foreclosure homes and how many families will be affected? City government has the power to enact something now to help our local region. And first, we want to be the leader in the new technology, the new industry that's, that, that is brought upon us and that's hydrogen fuel cell, and in between is, of course, natural gas. Thank you. Catherine Maestras. No R. My name is Catherine Maestas, and I am running for District 5. I would like to thank <coughs> League of Women Voters and its partners for putting on this forum, and thank you, the audience, for watching, because it's so important. This is a historic election this November. You should all be engaged. I put myself through college by working full-time and going to school full-time. I have an associate's, a bachelor's, and I'm a thesis away from my master's in public administration. I'm here to give the community a real voice and a transparent government so that I can truly represent the citizens of Elk Grove and no other special interests. I want to bring the best possible solutions for our families and for our children, both young and teens. I want you to vote for change, and I'd be honored to earn your vote as the change candidate. I am endorsed by State Controller John Chung, our Elk Grove Legislator Senator Steinberg, Senator Machado, and Assemblyman Jones. I'm endorsed by the Sacramento Central Labor Council, Stonewall Democrats, and Planned Parenthood, to name a few. Please visit my website at www.electcatherine.com. Again, call me. My personal cell is 916-837-7952. Please vote for a change. I'd be honored to earn that vote. Catherine Maestas, thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Jim Cooper. There's no roadmap to being a council member. It has to be a passion you have, something you want to go out and make your city better and educate the public. I've enjoyed the last eight years, and I'd be honored to have four more years. Um, I'm endorsed by the Elk Grove Police Officers Association, our CSD firefighters, and labor. Um, my big thing, I ran to make my city better, and what disturbs me is when I hear that Elk Grove is so crime ridden we have problems. If we didn't, I wouldn't be there. I just graduated a daughter from high school. I've got another one in middle school right now in Elk Grove. I believe in Elk Grove. I, when I moved there 19 years ago as a law enforcement officer, I picked Elk Grove specifically for one reason, for my family. It's still a great place and always, and always been a great place. 
And that's why I continue to champion Elk Grove. I'd be honored if the citizens would elect me for one more term. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Leary. Thank you. I'm honored to have the uh, Sacramento uh, Metro Chamber of Commerce as well as the Elk Grove Chamber of Commerce supporting my campaign. Uh, Elk Grove Chamber of Commerce has over 800 businesses in town. That, that right there in of, in of itself is, is a significant uh, support base for my, uh, my campaign re-election. Again, I've lived in the community for over 32 years, graduated Elk Grove High School. Uh, numerous people out there know me. They know what kind of a, a job I do as far as the community goes. They know what I'm able to do. Uh, they call me on a regular basis and I'm always uh, available to them. Again, um, the Building Industry Association also supports my campaign, the Building Exchange. Um, we're doing $300 million worth of road improvements within the city of Elk Grove. Uh, two of those road improvements in the, in the amount of $150 million is the Grant Line Interchange and the Sheldon Road Interchange. And those are two years ahead of schedule without federal funding, folks. That's unbelievable. Again, we are, un we are unprecedented in what, the, what we do down there and, and what we set. So I just want to say that if you want to continue going down an unprecedented road, the path of, uh, that's of least resistance and, and make new changes, that's where we, we are, that change agent as a council. Thank you. Thank you. And Robert Phelps. Yes, I want to remind you I'm Robert Phelps and I'm in District 5. Uh, my goals for this are to reclaim integrity, number one. That's my number one plank in, the, in this uh, platform that I have. My second goal is to establish economic uh, stability for the city. My third goal is going to be to slow down our expansion a little bit and use what I call cautious optimism for the future. Uh, my fourth goal would be to, and this is uh, something to have to work with the Charter Commission, I'd like to see term limits uh, instituted for our elected officials in Elk Grove. The fifth thing I'd like to do is enhance our support for our seniors and veterans because both of those populations will be increasing over the next few years. And the final thing I'd like to do is we already have our codes there. We need to take a good look at them and enforce them. The municipal code, the uh, community enhancement code, the uh, new, uh, did I say new, the nuisance and community enhancement code, and the municipal code all need to be enforced in this city uh, to help our citizens enjoy private enjoyment of their property and to be safe in this city. And um, I urge you to vote for me. Uh, I think I can bring you intelligence and experience and in, uh, integrity to this job, and I hope you will. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to thank the candidates one more time and also our panelists for taking time out and also for the time it takes to form all the questions and come so prepared to help us today and all of the volunteers who made today's forum possible. Today's forum has been designed to impart information to you, the voter, in accordance with our belief that a democratic government depends on the informed and active participation of its citizens. We hope that the insights that you've gained from this forum will help you in making your decisions. Please vote on November 4th for the general election in all of the areas as an informed and active voter and help make this democracy work. Thank you.